Hello, and welcome to this bullshit. I'm fucking upset. <laughs> and I'm the scrambler. <laughs> oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Um, What the fuck was this? <laughs> what the fuck was tonight, guys? It was glory. This was rough. Oh, glorious. This was really rough. Yeah. Oh. All right. So we watched. What movie did we watch? We watched the scram a uh, scribbler scribbler. <laughs> um, holy God! What the hell? Oh man, I. What movie did we watch last time? The Alien Raiders. I take back every bad thing I said. Like that movie was a masterpiece. I knew what happened in Alien Raiders. Um, Alien Raiders had a plot. Alien Raiders has a plot, and apparently that's really important in a movie. Um, I'm, I'm going to disagree. <laughs> I actually like this movie way better than Alien Raiders. <laughs> All right. Um, why don't you read the first line? Okay. Then? Katie Cassidy stars as Suki, a young woman confronting her destructive mental illness. All of that is in parentheses. I'm not reading that. <laughs> like... Yeah. Uh, using the, the Siamese burn, an experimental machine designed to eliminate multiple personalities. That's the first line? That's the whole first sentence. Give me the rest of that. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, that's about as much <laughs> of the plot I can remember. I'm yep. so mad at this movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, 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 the closer Suki comes to being cured, in quotations, she's haunted by a thought. What if the last unwanted identity turns out to be her? Ba ba ba. Combining science fiction elements with kick... No, no. <laughs> Combining science fiction elements with ass-kicking action from a cast of stunning and talented actresses. Please. The Scribbler captures the mind-bending anarchistic spirit of Dan Schaefer's graphic novel and brings it thrillingly to the screen. The star-studded ensemble includes Michelle Trachtenberg, Eliza Dushku, that Eliza Dushku, Gina Gershon, oh my god, Sasha Gray, Garrett Dillahunt, Michael Imperioli, and Billy Campbell. I'm embarrassed to have watched this movie. Here's the crazy thing. So this movie is 90 minutes on the money. You know why it's 90 minutes on the money? Because that's what's required for it to be a feature-length film, is 90 minutes. Um, this just made it in. And it felt like a fucking eternity. <laughs> It, Nothing happens yeah. in this movie. Bad wigs? Oh, yeah. Glorious wigs. So also, so on the front of the movie is a photo of uh, the Scribbler. Um, it is a blonde, maybe woman um, in what we thought was like breastplate armor. Um, but it's not. It's a skeleton costume that she picks up at like the third act of the movie that she just steals. I thought it was going to be like a superhero costume, but it really, it's just, she wakes up in her underpants on the street and then that's just what she grabs. Uh, Spoopy from Alien Raiders makes a cameo. That was nice. It's his costume shop. Yeah, he owns a business. He owns a business. Um, I've, I genuinely don't even know where to start with this fucking movie. Um, I mean, okay. We'll start at the I, beginning. Yeah. The movie starts off lying to you because the very first line of the movie is, can I have a pen? You can't talk without a pen. And it's like, well, you are talking without a pen. Because you asked for a pen. So we're, we start off on a really bad foot in this movie. Um, don't lie to me in the first sentence. So the movie thinks that it can get away with doing that because it it for sure thinks it's smarter than you. The movie. Not, not like the actress or like the character thinks they're smarter than you. The movie thinks it's smarter than you. And the movie thinks it's edgier and everything so it's gonna do this like this thing where it like lies and then smiles at itself constantly throughout the entire movie uh all right so uh we oh, op we, we open on some fingers we we missed we i think we already we already missed uh aaron's favorite part of the movie smoking oh yeah yeah we're getting we're, we're just about there <laughs> yeah so it opens on some yeah. fingers and like, you know, tapping on a goddamn table. Goddamn dirty lie. <laughs> and then a goddamn dirty lie. And then we get uh, Eliza Dushku, 
who doesn't know how to smoke. And it's, I, I didn't catch it. I'm not a smoker, but Aaron caught it immediately. Like she's fucking movie smoking. It looks so awkward. She's like the whole filter is in her mouth, like all the way in there. Yeah. It didn't add anything for her character. She's a psychologist. Like, it's a strain. Was she? Yeah. She was a criminal psychologist. I'm a criminal psychologist. I know Dude. a lot about it already. <laughs> 14 year old like emo me would have wrote this movie. Yeah. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious if the graphic novel is better. Cuz th there's some really cool like comic book shots in here. It feels like a comic book sometimes to me. Yeah. Um I wonder if the the graphic novel is any good. I don't know, I didn't read maybe it. Maybe it's just a bad adaptation. Uh, uh it definitely is a bad adaptation. <laughs> <laughs> it it definitely It could be an accurate adaptation. Maybe the maybe the graphic novel sucks. It doesn't maybe, have the man. budget for what it's going for. Mm -mm. Like there's very clearly a few parts where it's like they wanted something to happen there, but because they didn't have the money for it, they just couldn't show it. So we always see like just after something happens. Or uh, we see like something happening inside of a door that we can't see inside of, right? Like near the very end, oh, where she yeah. gets knocked into the electrical box or whatever, or the yeah. dog, or the dog, or when um, uh, what's his nuts gets uh, like kicked into a radiator, but doesn't he just kind of sits down aggressively? Oh yeah, they didn't have we're, we we got to just start chipping away at the plot of this fucking movie there there is no plot of the fucking movie is what i want to start by saying okay yes there is moving on um <laughs> Aaron, would you like to explain the entire movie yeah, yes go ahead and give me a synopsis of the plot aaron please all right so the plot is that a person with multiple personalities and two wigs and multiple wigs <laughs> like lots of wigs uh has a there's a man ass there's some the man ass <laughs> there's some yeah, ass on I'm pretty right distracted now. right now there's like a a 300 movie sex scene that goes on like really long yeah. for no reason I'm guessing 300 must have come out like right before this probably and they saw cuz I think that's a shot uh, in the 300 movie where like the the wife like rubs her hand over his head or something while they're fucking it's just this is egregious this it's, is it's a lot this is getting closer to like art porn. I think they had the, I think maybe the 90 minute thing you were talking about. They were like, we need like an extra three minutes. Yeah. Of B roll sex scene. We filmed a and whole lot. We'll just lot. stylize it and we'll, we'll put it in the very beginning of the movie. <laughs> and we'll put a radial blur and a vignette on it and we'll just add everything that we had because we shot it at 120 frames a second or whatever. So yeah. you think they made this sex scene longer um, to make the movie longer? Make the movie longer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think they're just perverts. I mean, it could be that too. It could be both. Yeah. All right, Aaron, continue. We got multiple personalities, multiple yeah. wigs, multiple titties. And so there's <laughs> one nipple ring. There's a doctor and he has an experimental device and she ends up in the hospital and he starts experimenting on her to eliminate the personalities. Okay. Yes. But yes. Yes. And so he puts her in the halfway house to monitor her while she proceeds with this procedure. Ba -boom. But like, it's not really like a halfway house. It's just like a rundown apartment. It, like it's the worst the, kind of the halfway inmates house. run the asylum. It, yeah. it, there's, there's no doctor on yeah. present. So basically she was like, uh, like orphaned, right? They went into her backstory a little bit. She was yeah. orphaned, bounced around from home to home. And she didn't learn how to speak until she was like 11. That's like at the end of the movie, though, when they yeah. start explaining all that. That's when they reveal the, the plot. <laughs> like The plot thicketh at the end. It's one of those things where it's I, we kept expecting like a plot twist, like Mr. Manass that we just saw. We thought he was maybe like a, like a Shutter Island kind of doctor. He's not. Mm -hmm. Everything I is actually there is a plot twist. I think it's just isn't. they reveal the plot. And yeah. that's the twist. Yeah. Every, the, everything that's happening on screen is is potentially happening like as it is no, it absolutely is happening the people that you is. meet are actual people even though she's schizophrenic yeah it would have been more interesting uh we'll, we'll fucking get there okay yeah. so uh our our main actress is being interrogated in medias res yeah and yeah, yeah in current time so we're gonna jump around a lot for no good reason and so the main actress is being uh, interrogated by two cops um eliza dushku and guy from the sopranos um, 
Get it back. Yeah, Bring It On and Sopranos. And they are doing the... It's kind of good cop, bad cop, but it's just like understanding cop and asshole cop. Like, Eliza Dushku is just like trying to be nice and like, oh, I'm a criminal psychologist. And Soprano is just like, hey, fuck you. You killed a bunch of people. <laughs> Hey. hey, you fucking kill. Anyway, uh, Dude, Elijah douche canoe is just and just oh, no, sitting like there this. badly smoking. Oh, yeah, just, <laughs> her teeth are smoking like in the back. <laughs> it's like just going squirrel cheeks. Yeah. Uh, so there's been a bunch of suicides at the halfway house. Yeah, oh, that's right. Where she's and staying. That's what the police are investigating. Right. And so, she is one of the only witnesses. That's right. Left. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So she. Then we jump back in time to when she goes to the halfway house slash Charlie Day's apartment. Yeah. And um, I want to point out and come back to this later that the, as she's walking up to the door, it's, um, a woman jumps off the roof and dies. Mm hmm. Uh, because it's called Juniper Towers. Jumper yeah. Towers. And someone spray towers. painted Jumper. Yeah. Wait, is it spray paint? It looks like it's it's like an overlay or something like that. Like they did it in post. It's MS paint. It's not spray paint. Damn. No, it, it look, <laughs> we get a close up shot of it at one point and it looks bad. Everything in this movie looks bad. It's like all the worst bits of the Matrix, like everything being green and ugly. And oh, God. Yeah. The, the color grading on this is ridiculous. It's, it's also it's weird because the color grading is awful, but the lighting is so flat. Like everything is just flat and boring. All right. So she goes to Juniper Towers. Which gets MS painted to jumper towers. Yep. And Watches someone jump. Yeah, she's walking up and they just very prescient. <laughs> yeah. Blood all over her, like just gory. That's like the most gory thing in the movie, right? Just right there. Just uh, Yes. yeah. Is there any other gory? You could like see her scalp. Like Yeah, yeah, I guess that was true. So they blew all the budget there. And it kind of came out of nowhere. You're just like, oh. And then she just yeah, goes, goes inside. She's like, uh, <laughs> She's like, that was fucking weird. Ain't my problem. I'm not cleaning that up. Yeah, she because she's wackadoo crazy, yeah. right? She is beyond the pale, through the looking glass, whatever you want to call it. She is the 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 crazy person. She's one flew over the cuckoo's nest. She's nuts. And uh, I don't even know if those references are right. And I don't care. I'm mad at the movie. <laughs> it's very very pretentious. Uh, so she's she's insane. Uh, so, like, she sees a person kill themselves, just jumping to their death, and she's like, mm, what a Tuesday. And so she goes into the building. She's uh, She walks up the dirtiest staircase. It's beautiful. There's a bra and panties just right there. And, yeah, there's a bra and there, Her underwear from the future are there. <laughs> and she meets a, a naked woman. She's afraid of clothes. Pathologically yeah. afraid of clothes or yep. something like that. Whatever. She's nude and her, her baps are out for the, most of the movie. She's going to wear a dress later. That's not important. Yeah. Why was she wearing? Okay. We'll get to it. We'll Whatever. Get we'll so get then she get then she meets um uh, Cleo, Snake Lady. Yeah. She meets Snake Lady. Um, She looks like uh, a dollar store fortune teller. Like she carries tarot cards with her. Yeah. And she says, stay out of the stairs. And she goes, cool, dope. And then she goes up the stairs again. She meets Hogan, I think, this time. Oh, no, no, no. Tiny Tina. Not yet. No. no. Wait, is there a fourth one? Who a the fourth fuck is girl? Tiny Tina. The bunny Ears. Oh, she meets yeah. Bunny Ears. Yeah, she bunny meets ears. porn star Sasha Gray. Yep. Owen Gray. And it's just a flat shot of Sasha Gray with Bunny Ears. And then she's like, she, she everyone goes, jumps. She goes into her apartment. Which and looks then cool. a, a guy <laughs> knocks on the door. And it's, it's some sugar. Yeah, he has a jar of sugar. And she, what does she say? Do you guys remember? I don't do sugar. Oh, God. Yeah, I think yeah. that was the minute that I started turning on the movie because it's just so edgy. <laughs> she doesn't do sugar. It's like. But she does coffee. She just starts pouring coffee the next scene. What does that mean? What is that? She doesn't eat sugar. What does that mean? Is she diabetic? What? She she mentioned anxiety right mean? before that. I wonder if she just gets sugar high. She doesn't have anxiety. She, she does say that. Out. She says that. This movie gave me anxiety. Uh, oh, <laughs> so I'm not justifying her lack of love of sugar. Anyway. Uh, sugar was the metaphor for he came sex. over to have sex with her. Yeah. And said, I have some sugar for you. And she was like, I don't do sugar. 
And then oh, they wait, fucked. Wait, hold she on. was teasing him. No, but she was like the guy like he straight up tells her that he like faked cutting his wrist. Yeah. Um cuz so he can fuck all the girls in uh the asylum slash apartment. And then she goes and she takes a really long piss. Oh, and yeah, for days. Oh yeah. She pissed so hard the clock went backwards. <laughs> yeah. Um she's and then just on there straight pissing through time. And, but yeah. she's <laughs> also experiencing multiple personalities while this happens and whatever personality gets off the pot has sex with him. Yeah. Correct. Uh, and they're done by 6.30, I'm pretty sure, or something. They get done really early. It's they very got bad time. It's very responsible. <laughs> I appreciate that element of the movie. They're not, like, up till 4 a.m. This movie damn near happens on bank hours. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There's always a clock in the background. I think the latest it gets is, like, 9.30. That's oh, fair. Time for bed. Yeah. yeah. Way past my bedtime. <laughs> That's how you know this movie was written by a 14-year-old. Oh, damn. God. You can't imagine a time later than 9 p.m. It's a school night. Uh, yeah, this was written on a school night. Staying up till 930, mom. Uh, okay. You just don't understand me. So she meets and fucks. I don't do sugar, mom. I'm not sweet like that. Not that sweet little boy you knew. What's this bit? You know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm mad. I don't know if we're talking about the movie anymore. Uh, I know. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the. He's just venting. I'm yeah. just mad. <laughs> Welcome to our therapy hour. Anymore, mom. <laughs> <laughs> getting them go I'm working through some shit you guys <laughs> you guys have fun talking about the movie I'll be in the middle here uh, just oh no personal therapy time <laughs> alright well, welcome to partial therapy yeah. welcome to partial therapy alright so she fucks the next door neighbor for a cup of sugar uh <laughs> she doesn't do sugar uh he wakes up in the morning she realizes her personality fucked him and she didn't get to fuck him. And then he gets up to leave and flashes one ass cheek oh God. and <laughs> and leaves through a mirror. Um, uh, what the fuck happens next? So she she wakes up. At- he leaves. And then she notices that uh, some electronic shit is like hanging out of her ceiling. Oh, is that what so happened? she's blacking out at I night. I thought that's when she took hookah. I thought the electronic no. stuff happened after she took the hookah. No, she has to. She has to electrocute herself first. Yeah, because that electronic shit doesn't come out yet until she releases the Riddler. So I is think that, it does. Is that? Mm-hmm. I think it's right away. No, because he. he Are you guys? She both has to right, show maybe? him. And wait. No, it, it starts slow. It's just like a bunch of. It looks like it fades in the background. It's like a bunch of loose wires and shit. But that's mm. the. They just shit. fucked, and he didn't see it. When did they did see it? Was on there. No. Anyway, maybe it, it th- this movie doesn't, it, it sucks. Not funny years. <laughs> so she's blacking out at night and then writing shit all over the walls, building some sort of weird device. She's modifying the, uh, experimental Electro- equipment that the doctor gave her. Electrotherapy thing. Yeah. The doctor gives her the her Siamese- alternate personality is modifying it while she's not awake. The machine is called the Siamese burn. Yeah. And according to the movie's lore, it is intended to, uh, every time you use it, it deletes one of your multiple personalities. Just one. And I don't know why you don't just like hook up the battery to your ears and then just like, bam, 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 just bam, bam, bam. I know, just <laughs> go for it. Just because, get it like, done. Just get it over with. Yeah, They, they tell you that you got to like do multiple sessions or something, but it doesn't like, what the fuck does it matter? It literally has a, a countdown time. Like how many personalities she has, like starts at nine and they didn't have enough actors to have nine personalities represented in the apartment. So complex. They skip two. So they skip a bunch, but it, it literally has a countdown timer. How many personalities she has left? Yeah. Uh, I think her, the, the scribbler personality is actually modifying it to, instead of like erasing one, they're combining. Cause that's sort of where it gets to in the end. Oh, is that what's supposed to happen? So, yeah, I think they're, it's designed to erase personalities, but she's modifying it to combine them to exist at the same time. Okay. That's also me probably making a better movie. <laughs> like, no, it absolutely is. <laughs> like, I got your back, movie. And 100% is you doing the that. Scramblers. God, her wig looks bad in that scene. Mm. We should get to this scene. Um, So a dog shows up and the dog talks in a Cockney accent. Can you pick me up something to eat? I'm fucking starving. That's cool. No. What accent does it have? No, it's not cool. Oh. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that happens. It sucks. <laughs> the dog's mouth doesn't even move. I was disappointed. Yeah. That accent blows. That dog is still the best character in the movie, though. Uh, I mean, it just wins because it's a dog. Yeah. 
Uh, and every, everyone dog. else sucks. That's another thing about this movie. All the characters suck. Um, yeah. They're just fun. really yeah. unlikable people. Like every single one of them. Um, don't write characters like that, I guess. No, even, don't, even don't. the elevator. The elevator is the second best character. So she has a conversation with the elevator and the elevator's like, I might fall, but probably won't. You should get in me. Yeah. Get in me. Get, in, <laughs> get inside me. Yeah. And then her multiple personalities are like, no, don't do it. And then I think one of them says, fuck it. Yeah. They're just screaming at her the whole movie to fuck everything. Yeah. And then so after that, we're this we're up, we're caught up scene. to where we are this right is the now. Best scene in the movie. Though. She she gets mad at the elevator and she <laughs> she goes to take the stairs. But if you remember, she was warned not to take the stairs. Never take the stairs. As soon as she hits the stairs, she gets pushed down the stairs by a pair of fucking studded leather gloves. And she gets up, and the walking embodiment of Hot Topic <laughs> helps her up. <laughs> It's Michelle Trachtenberg. <laughs> and like my my fucking uh the second worst 10th grade <laughs> emo phase uh talks to her and is like, "Hey, have you seen my dog?" And she goes, "No, I haven't seen your dog." No, she's like, "Does he have a an accent?" Oh yeah, does, <laughs> oh, yeah does that's she, right. Does she talk does, does your dog talk in a cockney accent? She goes, no. And she goes, "No." And she goes, "Okay." And so she goes to walk down the stairs and I was like, Push her. Do it again. It would be so <laughs> funny. So funny. And then she gets it. pushed down the stairs again. She turns Deuce. her back Deuce. on the stair pusher. Bam. Good. Bam. Back to back. It is so great. It's the best part of the movie. It is genuinely. That I was, was the. I was hyped. And it's just, it's a peek into a trough. There was a pretty big pop there. And then the movie just uh, goes downhill again from there. It more, more or less the movie goes like this. If this is the bottom. And then it goes up here where she gets pushed down the stairs. Then it hangs out at the bottom again until the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Whatever. She gets pushed down the stairs. Uh, and then I guess she goes to see her boyfriend guy. Who's also fucking every other woman in the apartment building. Crushing it. She's and it. Uh, she asks him for a video camera. Yeah. Cause she wants to film the dog talking. Yes. No, I thought she, no, wants, she wants to, to film, film herself. She wants to film the scribbler scribbling. Oh, because she's doing weird shit at Because night. she's blacking yeah, out. And, she's blacking yeah. out and doing weird shit. Okay, that makes shit. way more sense. She's losing a <laughs> like, whole bunch of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's lost days at this point, too. Right. Yeah, like, she'll wake up in her, like, well, it's, it's way Wednesday. more than, and then, like, the clock goes backwards, and uh, I don't know. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, She got pushed down the stairs. She got a camera, and she's set oh, it up right. yeah. to film herself. She's setting up to film herself and uh, the the not never nude um, is wearing a green dress. Yeah, in like the hallway. In the walking hallway. in the hallway, like something happened to her. Um, and so then the dog says some sarcastic bullshit to her or something. And then uh, she hooks the car battery up to her ears and starts smoking a hookah and hits the button with the camera recording and then a whole bunch of time passes. And, yeah. Right. Yep. And then someone who's graffitied all over her walls again, her, the scribbler. Now is this one? Oh, right. No, no, no. Uh, the not never nude is now jumped. Yeah. Yeah. So we've lost the, the first one, the, the bunny, the bunny and the and not the never nude, never, not never nude. Yeah. The not so never nude. We yeah. have at this point left, we have, the Alice, the stair pusher, Miss Cleo, and Ms. Cleo. Um, the liberal arts teacher with the boa constrictor, right? Yep. <laughs> um, Damn, how much is tuition? <laughs> uh, oh, and we also have uh, the horny guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who's and, really into 90s tech. There's a bunch of like yeah. old TVs and VCRs like hot wired together. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's that kind of crazy. electronics. <laughs> Yeah. When she uh when she hits the vape and uh he's fixing his fucking oscilloscope <laughs> for whatever reason and the goddamn like everything I hate this movie. <laughs> now is this when uh techno or is technology already leaking from her ceiling? It's been leaking this whole time. It's, it's been, been leaking. leaking. Yeah, yeah, so after she films herself or attempts to film herself, um the she she goes to find the video camera again because she's like I want to see what happened last night because the dog's not talking to her anymore. No. After she after she uh, hit the big fucking vape. She erased 
the dog personality. I'm she raised, assuming. yeah. And the elevator. You never hear from the elevator again. Yeah, you yeah, hear from the elevator again. R.I.P. No, not really. You you think that if an ele it's uh, the opposite of Chekhov's gun. Like if the elevator is talking about how it's gonna, you want to drop someone through the elevator, right? If an elevator's talking, like you, an yeah, elevator's you, talking and you, it's you threatening, it. <laughs> like, and it's threatening to like drop you or maybe not. Shouldn't some something should happen with that? There's no payoff. The payoff is that at the end of the movie, she, she takes the elevator. She takes the and elevator. Alice and it's fine. takes the stairs. Yeah, she yeah. conquered and, her and fear of the fine. elevator. <laughs> Is that what it's supposed to be? She I, conquered her fear of the elevator? She's scared of the elevator because the elevator was trash talking her. No, she didn't say she was scared of the elevator. She was. She said the elevator hates her. And then she flipped it off. She flipped off an elevator. Mm. Um, all right. So she goes to find her camera, right? Dog's yeah. not talking to her. Elevator's not talking to her. Uh, and some of the voices in her head are no longer talking to her. She's really upset. She wants to find out what happened. And so she goes to find her camera, but it's not on the tripod. And she's like yelling at her dog, like, what the fuck? Where's the where's the camera? And then she turns around into the big pile of electronics hanging from the ceiling and she pulls out a camera. And she's like, ah, I found it. Looks like somebody microwaved it. Like, yeah. And wrapped a condom around it. It's yeah. got a whole bunch of shit hanging out of it. And so she goes to her. Uh, 1997 CRT television mm -hmm. that just so happens to have the correct hookup for video. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she plays the video back from the camera. What do we see? Uh, we see the Big Bang Theory, right? No, 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 no. That, the... that's, that's footage from her. Uh, by the way, this is all being intercut with like uh, footage from her when she was a patient in the hospital. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the one of the Big Bang Theory actors is there. Um, uh, Doctor Who. I'm going to call him Doctor Who. I don't remember his name. And, uh, and I'm trying to think of his character name. From the I never Big watched Bang that show. The only one I know is Sheldon. Uh, the, I never did either. Not yeah. Sheldon. And two other doctors are arguing and electrocuting the shit out of main actress. What's her name? Suki. 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 They're, uh, the scribbler. The scrambler. The scrambler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the scram. I get in the ring and I start scrambling. I just want to get through this. The. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> we gotta we gotta have some content out of this. You can't just like laboriously try to. I hate this movie. It's so bad. Okay. It's so up its ass. So she plugs it in. What what does she see? She sees she uh, sees the uh, glowing eyes of her, she sees, her own eyes. Yeah, PS2 graphics of herself like floating crookedly. Oh yeah. In the television mm -hmm. with glowing eyes. With uh. And bad face tattoos. With uh Helios from God of War. Yeah. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the glowing eyes and mouth so she sees the scribbler <laughs> the scribbler <laughs> which by the way is like that is like the least um threatening name no yeah for uh whatever the fuck she's supposed to be, supposed to be? <laughs> i don't really know like, no don't scribble <laughs> i don't where did we get that superhero thing from it's on the back of the the damn box no it's not yes it is no she is clearly posed like a batman spider-man the crow also, uh, we haven't talked about her tattoos. She has a oh. bunch of magic marker tattoos. She does. I don't know. I just want to talk. Okay, what no, mean? it 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 does. By Phil Wheat, nerdly, one of the best superhero origin movies committed to celluloid. Mm -hmm. Does she save the day? I think she becomes the, the scrambler. scrambler. <laughs> At the end. Yeah. Eat your heart out, Marvel. Yeah. yeah, where I don't know if she's gonna like fight crime or not, though. You know, she didn't fight. I'm not even quite sure she fought a real person. It may have just been an allegory for a multiple personality. It's hard to tell. When she, when she, uh, <laughs> when she vapes away <laughs> one of her personalities, um, because she puts on some electric earrings and then puts in a mouthpiece and like hooks that up to a car battery and fucking fries herself, like. <laughs> Uh, every, every time she does that, someone jumps off the roof or someone gets thrown off the roof. There it is. There it is. And it's God, that's awful. It's always the 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 woman who's just hooked up with the dude across the hall. Right. So oh, yeah. That's whoever he one. bangs gets 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 killed. dead. Just yeah, it right gets away. got. And so you are kind of actually you don't make that connection. The movie makes that connection for you. Yeah. It's worried that you won't understand. And I thought that the movie was going to. So the movie spending this whole time being like, oh, I'm so much smarter than you. I'm a real smart, edgy fucking film. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, OK, so this is an allegory for every time she electrocutes herself. 
She loses one of her personalities. One of the women that dies is one of her personalities. That's and I was like, that would have been, you know, kind of an interesting way of showing that she's losing parts of herself. Like parts of herself are literally dying off. Yeah. Like she loses the ability to be naked. Yep. She loses the ability to have bunny ears and to ride in elevators. I'm not sure what the first the girl, the girl that died before she got there. I'm not sure what she did, but um, losing her freedom. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. But we don't learn anything about that girl. I don't think yeah. really. I don't, no one even really seems to care that she's gone or any of them. No, no one cares about any of them. There's just a big blood pool of like dried blood in the fucking um, doorway that stays there for the entire movie. And it's hilarious. It like adds to the evidence that they are not real because it's a, it's a halfway house. Like there's, there's cops there. There's right, doctors but it, but, there. But because no, it's not people are house. dying. No one's there. It's, no one's there. No one the reacts at all. The asylum. There's it really makes you feel like the, they are part of her personality. Also in the very beginning when she's covered in blood, no one even bats an eye at that. No, either, oh, yeah. either that's like, like regular occurrence, which maybe, or uh, the blood's not really there, you know. So it they, the movie puts all this evidence into thinking that these women are her personality, but they're not. They're just women, also in a halfway house. Just women. No, I just. Don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't think the movie does actually spend any time making them her personalities. I think that. I wanted it to be that because that would be a better movie. Well, we, we all see, thought that. You all thought, well, I think you and I think the rest of us, uh, we all thought that there was a going to be a twist in this movie and there's not. No, no it's, it's just face value. It, it is exactly what's happening. No, the twist is that she gets a Michael or a Michael. <sighs> Michael. A Mike Tyson <laughs> face tattoo. Does she? And beats the shit out of a goth girl on uh, on on the on, on the ceiling, rooftop, yeah. and then uh, goth girl uh, offs herself anyway. Spoilers, We're, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> spoilers. I'm sorry, I, can, I gave can, away the ending of this pile of shit. I can't All believe right. the pusher pushed Bye. herself. <laughs> yeah. We're done now. <laughs> we watched a movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, where the fuck were we? She's about to do another treatment on herself. And she instead does it on the dog. Yeah. We, oh, that's right. Is that, is that what happens right here? Yes. Is that what's supposed to be happening? Yeah. She do, There's a scene where she puts like the, the earrings and shit on the dog. Or she's like looking at it menacingly. Yeah, and then, and then she electrocutes the dog. Yeah, yeah. Like full on. I think like, she's questioning what is happening to the machine because it, it does. it's like growing every day. And she's like, I don't want to do this on myself. I keep blacking out when I do. So right. she does it on the dog. Okay. And then the dog gl- gr- like glows red eyes like a Ghostbuster style and gets in the closet. Yeah, she shoves <laughs> like it somehow. in the closet. And then is that when the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser makes its first appearance? Yeah, because the doctor is scheduling a visit. But she, but no, it's happening on the screen right behind us that she's scribbling out all the writing. She's been writing on the walls and shit this whole yeah. time. So it's just covered it. So the doctor's like banging on the door and she has to go scribble over because she's the scribbler. She has to scribble over all her scribbles. Yeah, so she yeah. doesn't look insane. Because they all say killer, which I don't understand either, because I think yeah. the movie's trying to make you think that unzip, she's killing people. Unzip your mind. Yeah, so... But she's, the, she's not a killer, right? No. that We'll find out later that the scribbler is trying to warn her about the actual killer. Oh, so it's not a suicide. It's it's someone killing. Right. Oh. Uh, yeah, because the, but the 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 fucking scribbler doesn't ever say like who it is. Just keeps writing killer on the walls and unzip your mind. Yeah, and w- w- you could you, could you be more obtuse? Like obviously you fucking know. Why are what what is this multiple personality thing doing if it knows? So the um, she she electrocutes the dog. Oh. The dog achieves. Uh, fucking satanism <laughs> and it goes like full on blucifer yeah and and yeah it gets red eyes and uh moves back and forth in a door frame while she closes it um and then the doctor finally fucking shows up yeah and uh he can he comes in early it's been weeks because of all of the suicides and um fuck she she's doing it right now and even as she's doing it i have no idea what's happening she's trying to distract him from the demon dog in the closet <laughs> uh right but he keeps hearing because the dog is growling in there yeah so he's she, like oh it's the pipes so she's gonna the hit him Danny she's acting him. so suspicious in this scene too it's like yeah. comical does she just offer him canned goods yeah no remember <laughs> she's like the, the multiple personalities are like talking to her and they're like seduce him hit him with a pot oh seduce yeah seduce him yeah, the, the movie has a problem with tone. 
sometimes, like especially right now, where it's, it feels more like a, a like a slapstick kind of it's dark comedy. Yeah. Goofy. Like she's like holding up like a frying pan behind her back that she wanted to beat him over the face with. Yeah. Uh but then patient ninety nine. What does patient ninety nine do? She's gone Escapes. missing. Yeah, yeah patient ninety nine oh. has escaped. Yeah, so the doctor has to go deal with that. You kind of infer that she's patient one oh one oh seven. Yeah, no, yeah. So from the from the uh, the flashback tapes, from the flashback tapes that go in reverse order, um, you see that she's patient one oh seven. Yeah. So that's another thing is that everything's written backwards, and there's the flashback tapes happening in reverse order. There's a lot of like shots of mirrors and stuff like that. Yeah. Is there any payoff for things being backwards? No. So I th- I think what's happening so the the scribblers insider. And is actually writing on the inside of her skin. But that, it still that's be- why it looks backwards. No, no, no. no, no I don't think on her on her body, right? Is that why she gets veins? That's why like, she gets she like gets face tattoos veins? and yeah, because they're they're words sometimes. But I think the scribbler is just used to being inside and like writing backwards. Why? I don't I don't know. Why does the scribbler Right backwards. That's too Aaron. smart for this movie here. You're too. Uh, I'm filling home, in gaps. Home girl, <laughs> I'm filling in holes. Girl here has 163 IQ, and I think you're smarter than her, so you might have 165. That's a cool like comic book. Like that's the scribbler. That's a person trapped inside <laughs> of a body, who can only express themselves by writing on that person's skin backwards. <laughs> well, it's because they're on the inside. They're writing, and then you look at it from the outside. The scribbler is like still such a bad superhero. It's not great. Yeah, yeah that's terrible. I would not be. I guess uh, it's better shook than. I guess it's boots. better than <laughs> like her nemesis, the pusher. Yeah, we, yeah. we have. We're gonna have the big standoff later of the scribbler versus the pusher. There's only two women left at this point, so I mean, you can kind of take a guess at which one's the pusher. It's either liberal arts teacher or the one that pushes her down the stairs. Yeah, real head scratcher on that one, boys. I bet it's a liberal arts teacher. <laughs> Which one has the has snake? A... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, so yeah. they uh, fucking uh, doctor comes home. She tries to the voices in her head tell her to fuck him. And then the voices in her head also tell her to hit him with a frying pan. Yep. She doesn't either. She doesn't either. He because, leaves. Yeah. Doctor gets a phone call. Patient 99 has escaped. And so he just fucks off. He's like, whoop, my bad. Got a bail. I got to go. And takes off and just skedaddles. GTG. And they, they, her and uh, boyfriend fucker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, okay, this, okay, I take it back. The pushing scene on the stairs was good. And then this next scene, it had another little, like, nice little slapstick gag. So, yeah, they, cool, they yeah. equip frying pans. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> I'm over encumbered about this movie. Yeah. And then sneak <laughs> at the door. Uh, because Devil Dog is in there. Yep. And then they both like they open the door. No, no, no. He, hold on. You're missing that he has a smaller frying pan and she oh, has yeah. the big one. Oh yeah. And then he realizes because he's in front. She's like, "You go first And he's like, "All right." All right. And he's like, "Okay, <laughs> but I want the big frying pan." Yeah. He's like, "Swap me." So they swap <laughs> frying pans. They so open that, the door. That made me chuckle. Yeah. And the dog just trots out, and they both are scared. Yeah. And it's just a regular dog. And it's just a regular ass dog. I don't know why it turned into Lucifer for. I don't know. And so I don't think the movie cares, so I don't care. <laughs> I didn't understand that. I didn't. It didn't click with me right away that she uh, electrocuted her dog. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, you just thought the dog went crazy. I just thought yeah, the dog we went th- crazy. <laughs> we thought. I thought she was gonna murder the dog because like yeah. she's like sitting there like holding her head like screaming at the dog to talk to her and the voices are going and I was like oh she's she's I mean we don't know that she's not not the pusher at this point so we think she's gonna push the dog off the roof or something i yeah. thought i thought she was gonna throw the dog off the roof and i thought the dog was gonna land in front of the doctor as the doctor was coming up i am so glad that didn't happen because i didn't quit this movie <laughs> i would have just like started just punching the playstation at that point just, yeah no okay That's so dog. um dog leaves uh boyfriend fucker and her <laughs> go into the room and uh boyfriend looks at this wall mounted vape and goes, I'm going to hit that real quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what happens. Pretty much. And he, uh, she's like, don't, don't fuck around. Yeah. She's like, it will kill you. And he's like, sick. I can't wait to be a demon dog. <laughs> yeah. He puts on his, uh, uh, fucking car battery earrings and, uh, puts the hookah in his mouth and, uh, goes for it. Uh, a bright light appears out of some windows 
And now he's Buddha. Yes. Yep. <laughs> floating. He's floating. floating crisscross applesauce. Criss <laughs> His eyes have gone milky, yeah. but he can still see. I know. It looks like he's blind. But he's not. And he's like super happy. And he's like, I'm ascended. I'm, I'm the real me without the mask. Yeah. Like we're full up. The movie is completely up its own ass at this point. Oh, a hundred percent. It's like it can't even breathe it so far up its own ass. And then he goes up to her and is just like, I want to see you without the mask. And I guess he uh don't give in to peer pressure, kids. Yeah. Um she hits the vape. She hits the vape. <laughs> One more she time. hits the car battery up vape. to her ears and hits the vape and uh she go. Uh, she goes Super Saiyan. Yeah, she goes. Su <laughs> that's right. She goes Super Saiyan level three. Yeah, her hair. Is, that's because her hair long. gets longer. Her hair gets long. Yeah. And he even comments he's like, "That's the." In fact, that's the only thing he says too. He's like, "Your hair." That that's what freaked him out. <laughs> I guess so. And then she walks out the window. Yeah. Um, flash forward like three days later, and she's in her underpants and uh, hanging out with Spoopy from the last movie. Yep. It wakes up half naked in front of a Halloween store. Yep. Which I mean, we've all been there. We've all been there. And that's when she decides to adopt. I'm assuming that's when she decides to adopt what I assume is her superhero costume, but it's just like a cheap spandex skeleton. Jumpsuit. <laughs> like, so I guess it should be. She wears it for the rest of the movie. In fact, actually in, we didn't notice this at first, but in the, uh, in medias res, like cause she's getting interviewed. Good cop, bad cop this whole time. She's wearing it under her jacket. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's the origin of the suit, I guess. Well, I hate it. I hate she it. She was naked and next to a Halloween store, so she put on some spandex, as you do. As you do. Put this right back here. Uh, think about what it did. So uh, she wakes up, like they said, uh, in the street, in her boy shorts and a fucking crop top. Um, she oh, yeah, had all her wounds are healed. She's healed. Yeah. So it's, I think the implication is it's been several days that since she hit the vape, I think her, I know. I think the implication is that she's a superhero and that she is healed completely from all of her afflictions. She's getting stronger. The she, more personalities, she the more eliminates. vape, more dab she hits. It's like the one yeah. she's combining <laughs> with the, no, the, the more the, the scribbler can come loose, the more she heals. Mm. Mm. <laughs> is that what's supposed to because I, it, I could also I be know. explained by her just being out of it for a few days you would I would assume that if she woke up face down in front of a, a costume shop that she would have awoken with more bruises than she went to bed with yeah all uh, her cuts and stuff are healed too fair enough and her wig is not so high far on her forehead too oh that's, that's a 3D shot isn't it damn I missed that the first time that's bad that was awful yeah Oh, did you miss the... Okay, we'll get there. I think you may have missed the part where she, they throw something out the window or something and the glass 3D effect. Oh, yeah, you did miss it. Oh, damn it. You, Rob was like, I'm going to go take a shit and then just don't pause it. All right. I don't care what happens. We are caught up in the movie real time. So um, there's only two women left and the horny man and the doctor, but uh, of the women, there's only two left. Uh, and the liberal arts teacher has now been pushed off the roof. So now there's only yeah. one left and our hero and the horny man and the doctor. They're all terrible. Everyone sucks. They really are. Horny man's mad. Wait, did she already make the phone call at the payphone? No, no. this happens afterwards. Uh, we're, we're, okay. we're getting there. Wait, yeah. she came back to the. Yeah, the, she comes back to the loony bin after well, she gets her fucking skeleton costume. I assumed the dead, that the she dead. was going to go home and change, but. Oh, yeah. Home where? <laughs> To Charlie she, Day's to apartment. Jump her heights. Oh. What is it? <laughs> like, and change into towers. what? She doesn't change. Because she found dead body. She doesn't need to change. She's perfect the way she was, Rob. That is not the thesis of this movie. The thesis of this movie is electrocute yourself until you are normal or completely bad shit. Or, or have superpowers. Or superpowers, yeah. Or superpowers. Either one. That's 30. Three percent, man. That's <laughs> fucking good odds. I mean, <laughs> you're either normal bat shit or have superpowers. I'll say, I'll because it's a sixty six percent chance that either I am the same or better, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll roll those dice. I'd roll that dice. Yeah, for sure. It's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, oh god! All right. Oh, uh, what? I, it's happening right in front of my eyes, and I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know what's on. about to happen next. Yeah. I don't remember where. where I think this leads. she's down to two. Yeah, it's just herself and the scribbler or the pusher. No, no, the personalities are. Down oh, the personal. Two. Okay. Yeah. Whatever happened when she was blacked out, she ran through a bunch. I guess. You. Yeah. You guys said they didn't have budget for extra characters uh, they actually showed while she was hitting the vape this time the number went down more than just one it went down to four right um i think i saw four i think we're down to two i think it's two i think we're down to two because the next time she's oh. like what if one of the personalities I that remember, gets figured, vaped is me what's going on <laughs> what's going on i got excited because i could figure i just realized you want right. to let us in on the fucking secret yeah, yeah okay uh so they go back to her room and the horny man wants her to hit the vape again, but she's like, no, if I do it again, I will die or maybe my personality will be overwritten by the scribbler or something like that. I think she's scared she's not the alpha alpha personality. That could be it. Yeah. Sure. Um, And he tries to like force the force uh, car battery her or something. And then that's when um, she has her like uh, ascended moment or something like that. And she manages to become the scribbler uh, not having hit the vape. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This is where we get what like it's pretty clear that they wanted to have a mm, like a, we want a wire pull. So a wire pull in movies oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> is where like you have a wire hooked up to an actor or an actress and it's like normally it's hidden or painted out in post. And it's literally just a harness that they wear. And then you have some people holding the the wire um, off screen and they pull and the person gets like flung backwards. Right now, they wanted her to go ape shit and kick uh, her boyfriend um, off the bed into a radiator. And like the, you would do a wire pull for that. You know, she would kick and he would go flying backwards into this radiator. Right. Especially because um, she is. um Kind of intermittently having superpowers now. Yeah, she's becoming the scribbler and she's becoming super buff. I get in the ring and I start scribbling. Uh, The scrabbler. Really good at scrabble. Yeah. And so they want... All of these are better names than the scribbler. (laughs) Like, they just want to kick her or kick him and then wire pull him. But he just, like, kind of just... Ow. (laughs) Yeah, it's like he didn't want to hit his head or something. (laughs) Yeah. Well, like I said, they they couldn't afford a stunt man that day. They couldn't afford a wire pull. Um, so she runs to the elevator that she's afraid. She, of. She's afraid of. Yep. And then she doesn't learn her lesson. Where does she go? She goes to the stairs. And you know what happens? Fucking nothing. Fucking nothing. Nothing happens. Uh, freaking lazy Chaffee like looks behind the wall, like a corner of the wall. And then she runs down the stairs. She runs outside. It's raining, but she's already wet because they've done five takes. And she's yeah. running. She's running like this. Yeah. yeah. She runs. She runs out, and it's like the th- fucking Very, fifth take. It's like Jaden Smith and After Earth bad running. Yeah. Damn. Shots fired. Um. So she runs out of of uh, crazy is, person hotel, <laughs> and she runs to a phone booth, which is antiquated and cute. Um, and using a coin that she obtained from somewhere on her person. She rem- keep in mind she is wearing a skin tight onesie at this point. She calls her doctor and says, "I'm cuckoo for cocoa puffs. You need to lock me up. I'm the killer. Uh, I'm the killer. I've I've done it. Or or does she say that uh, uh, something like? I think she might have said the boyfriend did it because boyfriend everyone that uh, he fucked died. Something like that. I but, think that's where we get this from. But then um. At one point, he was just like, he's like, what are you afraid of? And then her eyes light up and she goes, monsters. Monsters. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I don't know why that line was so funny to me. It's, it's like, it's they didn't say bad. monster one time in this whole movie. Until no, it's then. it's because oh, like the edgy, the edginess, like, and yeah. we haven't even been, I know that I've been uh, uh, aggressive towards it, but we haven't even been bringing up all the times that it's happened. How many times someone just goes on this diatribe of just pure like teen angst? It's or when uh, when when um, we're about to get to it, it's a real bad one. Yeah, when she asks, like uh, she she uh, gets a ride home somewhere from, from the doctor from her doctor yeah. in his fucking uh, Mercedes just, Benz in the in the Jag. Wait, in the she Jag. ran there, right? 
She ran. She no, ran. no, no, no. Yeah, she ran to the phone booth, called her doctor. And doctor, they got a, and then got a ride from the phone booth back fr- to the from the phone booth back to the insane asylum. Which what? is weird because they spend the entire time inside the gas station car wash. Yes. Yeah. Filming in the gas station car wash. Yeah. Um, and uh, she picks up a wad of papers on the floor, a fucking Manila envelope. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. just has it there, and it oh, just says yeah. patient ninety nine. And so she reads it like it, it, on screen time. It's like, who's patient ninety nine? Just she pops open and then flips the fuck out. And uh, it turns out patient 99 is Valerie. A- Alice. Veronica. Veronica. Yeah. Both. She's both she's, of them. She's the pusher. And pusher. and um, she sees a picture of the pusher, the stair pusher, um, who has lived in uh, Jumper Heights for longer than, than she's been there. But the doctor only gets the call that they lost Alice, the pusher, um, after a whole shitload of people have died. Yeah. It's been presumably weeks. Yeah. Yeah. She keeps losing like huge amounts of time. Yes. So what, what they did say the doctor was on the phone when he got the, uh, when they found out that she's missing and he's like, why didn't you tell me about this sooner? And she's like, I didn't want to disturb you. Maybe. But for weeks, weeks. That, that's a horrible secretary. Yeah. Assistant, whatever. Maybe Reception. you should have some staff at your insane asylum. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, too, is like when she gets to Jumper Heights, everyone says stay off the stairs. So it's pretty clear that it's established. <laughs> yeah, it's it's established. That's so a she lore. Spends lots of time on the stairs. Yeah, pushing, she push, pushing people down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, that's her superpower. Anyway, so she that's the she super villain of this movie <laughs> is pushing, pushing downstairs yeah, and the, off roofs. I the guess. antagonist of this movie is gravity. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah, she's a mentally handicapped woman at an insane asylum. But we're okay, we're, we're getting to the best and worst part of this movie though. Go for it. Um so the doctor after hanging out in the car wash for a little while drives her back to Jumper Heights and uh you were in the bathroom during this scene. No, we have we didn't even get to the best line yet. Wait, we haven't got to the best line? No, we didn't get to okay, I, oh, sorry. We, you we, go continue then cuz I Let me let me get to the piece. line then we'll get to the best part of the movie. So she she says, "Who is this?" And shows him a picture of the pusher. And the doctor says, it's complicated. Oh. And our main character says, so am I. Try me. <laughs> That's right. Jesus Christ. What did you do to her? It's complicated. So am I. Try me. It's yeah. complicated. So am I. Try me. Try me. Like, so imagine the edgiest thing you can think of. The edgiest teenager. The... Uh, that uh, anything you can think of, you're not thinking hard enough. It's worse. That is this movie. Yes. And, is. and like that line is enigmatic of the entire thing. Yeah. It's a perfect encapsulation of everything that has happened so far. It's, uh, um, it's every hot topic, sarcastic, t- uh, uh, t-shirt boiled down into 90 perfect minutes of dog shit. Yes. That is and everything's green or blue. Did you write the back of the box for this movie? Because you should have. That was that was so perfect. It was the, the problem with this movie. It is so up its own ass and pretentious and angsty. And it just thinks that it's so much cooler than you and so much smarter than you. And it's happening right now. So yep. am I. Try me. All right. So uh, the, the best scene in the movie. So they get back to Jumper Heights. And, um, they doctor gets out of the car. They're walking, they're fighting about whatever. And well, he doesn't believe her because she's, because she's a schizophrenic, wacko like, nut wacko job. Dude, yeah. but then she puts it together that the pusher is actually pushing these women off the roof. What? They're not jumping. So it's not jumper towers. It's pusher tower. Oh, oh shit. This movie does have a plot twist. Yep. The pusher was Pushing women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I can't believe that the pusher pushed. The woman that was pushing women down the stairs was also pushing them. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, uh, so that woman in the most glorious, cheapest three Chuck E. Cheese token effect jumps onto the car and then starts beating the doctor with the limpest wrist. Just bam. Oh, bam, yeah. Bam. Bam. 
bam, 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 the bam, fight, bam. the fighting. Yeah, uh, not good. She has this nice little after effect blackness from the crow around her. Yeah, um, and enough hairspray to keep her hair dry in the rain. It's and, she's fast as fuck. Oh yeah, <laughs> and the speed effect is pretty rough. Yeah, six she's million dollar like, man, like this. Like, yeah, she. It's yeah, like she starts with her fist at her shoulder. And then moves her fist in a straight line from her shoulder to the face. It's this motion <laughs> that she's doing. And she's beating cheeks with it. <laughs> and you would think, like, <laughs> like uh, with how strong and how fast she would be, that she would have annihilated that doctor's face. So the pusher yeah. is also the jumper because you just jumped off the roof onto the doctor's jag. And is also the puncher. And is also the puncher. And then so she, I guess, pushes... Um, our main character threw a window or the door doors? Oh. Yeah, back into, into the towers. In, well, into another hallway. Yeah. Because she pushes her so hard that she has to round a corner to come back into shot. But also, our our main character escapes into a slowly closing elevator, but we just established that the pusher moves at like the speed of light. She could yeah. have made it to the elevator. No, she was walking. She could have made slow. it up the stairs before the elevator made it to the 16th floor, which is now yep. currently filled with a smog machine. But, but that's the setup and payoff for the elevator is uh, she, she takes the elevator. She, she takes the elevator. The pusher takes the stairs. Honkers she's her more, fears. She's more scared of the pusher than the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, yeah. No. That, that is character arc and growth right there. Oh, oh my oh. God. That's her character arc. Yeah. She becomes able to take the <laughs> <Is> elevator. elevator <laughs> fear. She takes the elevator and grows her hair out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Beautiful. You got all fucked up. How did he? Did, so the pusher uh, came in yeah. and used the machine. No, he uh, boyfriend fucker. Oh, yeah, um, he brought her in. Oh, he used. Yeah. Yeah. Because boy. So uh, her and her doctor are hanging out downstairs in the lobby. Um, boyfriend fucker takes pusher <laughs> into her bedroom yeah. and is like, hey, I want to see the real you hit this vape real fast. Hook these car batteries up to your ears and hit the vape. And hit the vape. And so uh, she does and she transcends <laughs> like he did, but she turns into a fucking bitch, I guess. <laughs> and, her and real like, face is a bitch. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then she, I guess, pushes him because she's the pusher and like pushes his face or something. She pushed him she didn't almost push him out a death, window. Yeah. He just pushes him around a little bit. So around the room. Goes. And yeah. he describes her as bouncing around like a. A pinball? pinball? Something like that. A pinball. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite line in the movie. I forget what he said, though. And he's like, uh, me? Oh, my, <laughs> Did uh, I do this? My favorite line. It's my fault? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, you, you let her hit the vape, and now she's like uh, a huge bitch. And he goes, those girls didn't jump. They were pushed. Oh, my God. This is my fault. This is my fault? This is my fault? This is my fault. This is my fault. <laughs> Sounds like John C. Riley when he says it. <laughs> it's like, it was my fault. Was it me? <laughs> we're fucking them. And... That got such a laugh out of us. Like that delivery. Uh, oh, was my fault. I, I died. I died. Um, and then another great line is coming right up because she, you know, she has to hit the vape again so she can get superpowers. Also, yeah, yep. Um, so she hooks the thing up to her ears and she thing and she hits the button. And nothing happens. And then I guess the pusher finally managed to make it up the stairs. And she goes, looking for this. Like, it's just like some bullshit of wires. Just a wad of wires <laughs> yes. and a button on it. <laughs> but it's not the button for the machine. It's no. just some, like. It's a red button. <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's, a red LED light. Yeah, and it's a, a red LED light and some wires. Yeah. <laughs> like looking for this. It's like, what is that? I don't know. Nobody maybe. knows what that is. <laughs> no, because it doesn't look like the button that she's been hitting. No, no, it's not because she has the button on the bed with her. She punches it. Yeah, it's big. It's like this big. So what was that? <laughs> so it's some other little bullshit. I like that she I'm became like it's so stupid. <laughs> she just became the bitch and then just grabs the machine and yanks a piece of it out. Oh, my God. It's so stupid. <laughs> But why? Wait, how does she? It's like the same delivery as Yzma from the Emperor's New Groove, too. Like when she got the llama thing, like potion, like looking for this. But exactly. we actually know what the llama potion does. Turns you into a llama. Turns you into a, or turns you back into a human oh, from a llama. Whatever. Uh, whatever happens. <laughs> we should have watched Emperor's New Groove. We, we still <laughs> can. Oh, here's a 3D. Oh, oh yeah, there my it is. God. Yeah, you were, oh my God, you were in the... Cut that yeah. in. I That's missed so... that because I was shitting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It was good. Oh, no, it's oh, happening Oh, wait, this again. is how she transcends. 
Right. She she's like falling to her death. Oh, and she's monologuing. No. Yeah, the whole time that she's on the way down, she's monologuing. Is she? I'll bet you're wondering how I got here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then it does a montage of everything that's happened. But it's we like could have just started just here, just probably. Hap- Not the, everything that's happened. This thing has just happened. Yeah. yeah. We're just little... going to recap all the shit you've already seen. But yeah. just recently. Not like the stuff that you saw an hour ago. The stuff that you saw, like, 10 minutes ago, maybe. Yeah. Just in case you forgot. Now, the, the 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 effect they cut to when she's just, like, floating in the lobby of, of the crazy hotel <laughs> isn't bad. However, I am under... Th- the suspicion that the actress who plays the rest of this movie is not the same actress as was in the original movie because they put a long wig on her and then cover her face. You think she quit? She was like, this movie sucks. I think they, she got a better movie. Damn. I think that they, they like had like a filming time of like 40 days or something or 30 days. And for the last like six, she just couldn't be there. So they filmed all the fight scenes with a different actor in a bad wig. That would explain a with lot, a longer actually. wig. Yeah, that makes sense. Why the why the hair growth at all? And it may, maybe it's in sense. the comic, but who cares? And then Pusher yeah. Girl. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Uh, Pusher Girl very clearly doesn't want to be in this movie because uh, one, she's like never lit, and two, her hair is also always in and her she's face, always yeah. wearing giant like bug eye sunglasses. That's not how you climb. That is not how you climb. <laughs> that is exactly how you, I'm watching it right now. She like and missed like the foot hit the brick and went down and then she went um, up. <laughs> like while we were watching this movie too, it's at this point, Aaron goes, this is the, this is how you not movie. Or, this yeah. is not how you movie. <laughs> it's not how you smoke. It's not how you climb. It's not it's how you n- punch. Not uh, how you punch at all. No, not how this is not how you fight. This is not how you make a movie. It's not how you make anything. Superman punch. All right. So, <laughs> so we, so the pusher suddenly forgets that she's the pusher and fails to push, uh, and becomes the puncher, the puncher. Well, she, well, she tries to, uh, push the sex guy out the window or something. Yeah. But she's forgotten their one. The one thing she does, she's forgotten how to do, uh, which gives time for our hero to has ascended and survive falling out the window. To climb back up and we get to finally see the most boring fight scene <laughs> maybe ever put to that's another thing we didn't mention this is actually filmed on real cellulite cellulite yeah um that's why there's so much fucking bloat in this movie <laughs> Damn. that was a good joke thank you well, yeah, it's like she doesn't fight back for the first half of the fight scene for no reason. She just kind of gets punched. She just kind of. She just thrown. continues to get her shit rocked. Yeah, she sucks at fighting. There's a fantastic. She's standing right behind me, isn't she? Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> also, yeah. also she's Spider Man. Um, she she sticks to walls, um, that are, uh, actually just floors filmed at an angle. Yes. And. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she spends this entire fight getting her shit beat. And at one point, though, she manages to kick, uh, the pusher into some electrics. It's like, it's like a... It's a closet, but I'm yeah. ass- assuming there's electrics in there because it starts glowing and there's a danger high voltage. Yeah. But why is the door open? She gets... Like, that is a, that is a room where all the, the power boxes... And... Yeah, there's like a fuse box there yeah. with wires hanging. It's like a utility... There's she no, gets, there, she gets kicked into in a that? visual effects shot. Yeah. A video toaster effect. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I guess she, it's happening right behind me. I I, I don't know. She I she gets electrocuted. Really and and oh, God, I forgot about the gets electric powers. Now. Yes, it makes her stronger. Um, but the, but the scribbler is says using her superpowers finally, yeah, which is scribbling. The, yeah, the <laughs> scribbling on her own skin backwards. Yeah. And uh, tells her to stop. And she's like, nah. And then she like shows her her hip. Which also has some scribbling on it. Was that a wound also on her hip that when she pulled? Because it has like a black. There's some writing and there's like a black mark. Was that supposed to imply that she had gotten like? I think it's. I think it's a no, wound or no. Is that, I think those are more scribbles. The scribbles is it a? Yeah. Is it, maybe she should have that looked at by a doctor then. So the scribbler writes, but also just scribbles. 
which yeah. is very confusing. That's because that's why her face is all yeah fucking weird. So she grabs a uh, after she gets out of the electrical room and she's got electric powers now. Uh, she grabs a fucking rope. No, no, no. The the scribbler grabs a rope. Yeah, a power yeah. line or something. And uh, hangs lynches, her. <laughs> lynches yeah. her. <laughs> and throws and throws her off a building. Yeah. So that she is like hanging by her neck from the 16th floor. Uh, and we know it's the 16th floor because that's where her bedroom is. Mm-hmm. So she didn't fall very far. Um, fuck her boyfriend sees uh, the pusher hanging from her neck outside the window, which is kind of fun. But it's also pretty clear that the pusher is not hanging by her neck yeah. like in hanging, that shot she's very clearly hanging by her diaper yeah uh <laughs> hanging by her diaper <laughs> and then we get to another fantastic angsty monologue where the pusher gets to be all self loathy and like why is it that when i took off the mask i was ugly on the inside and when you you were beautiful on the inside or something yeah something like that and then she uh i know we just lynched her but she's still alive and then yeah, she kills she herself pulls her back up they and have a she, heart to heart yeah she pulls her back up and then she just jumps right back and then she's the like roof. thank you for calling me beautiful and then just does a gainer yeah. off the roof like <laughs> like this way yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of fucking cool it's, like, it's really good yeah and then the the scribbler is all like no I couldn't save her and then like uh, powerpoint special effects hit the roof it's uh yeah, it's, uh, yeah, like roots, scribbly roots from her come out. Yes, yeah, ink and then lightning, <laughs> lightning hits the roots strikes. and it ruins the whole effect. It's oh, very, whole very, yeah. very poorly tracked. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh God. And then she goes. Thank God that scene's over with. <laughs> what the fuck was the point of that? It was what? like the most boring fight scene. Just this, uh, the the pusher beats up the scribbler for a little bit. Her eyes glow, and then. St- She's dead or something. They have a little therapy session and then the pusher kills herself. Yeah. What was the point of the therapy session? If she's just going to kill herself. I think it would, maybe it was just too harsh if she just hung her off the side of a building. It would make sense though. If the pusher was like allegorical for one of her personalities, but she's not, she's just a, she's just a dick that lives in the apartment complex. That's right. Like if she came to her, if she came to terms with the like, uh, evil personality, and kills off the evil, or the evil kill personality kills off itself. Yeah, so like, that she can be a better version of, of whatever, and and uh, only does things for good or for you know the scribbling. And but no, <laughs> she, she just murders. I scribble for good and justice now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I I so, doodle for good. Yeah. Yeah, it should have been like something where it was like um, the pusher was like her personality that was like a defense mechanism that became evil or something like that. Like that's how she survived right. her traumatic childhood was she became this pusher personality. That, she started pushing, yeah, but then she yeah. would also push people away or yeah. something. None of that happened. It's just no, a dick. It's no. just a, yep. a dick that shops at hot topic and pushes people down the stairs and repeatedly off rooftops mm-hmm. off of rooftops after um, sloppy seconds, I guess we never, we never see the pusher fuck. But she is standing outside his door uh, one day. And I yeah. think the implication is she's going to see him. I think she was jealous. Force, they mentioned she was dick. jealous. They did mention she was jealous. That's why she, that's why she was pushing him off the roof. It's because they were banging homeboy. God, that's fucking stupid. That's her whole motivation. That's that's yeah, her origin I think story. I think is, you're right. She's just, my boyfriend banged somebody, so I started pushing him off the roof. Her boyfriend. It's just friends with benefits with every crazy girl in the apartment complex. That's her villain origin story. How embarrassing. This is pretty, this is really embarrassing. You said it earlier. It's like a child kind of came up with it. That's a child. Yeah. Like like, it's very clearly like, yeah, I think at one point I said that that actor that was playing the boyfriend was the director and it's not, he's a real actor, but it's very Mm -hmm. clearly like that's the writer's self insert. Like, all the women just kind of want to be with him. Also, what's the point of these two fucking detectives? So one's a cop trying to figure out who killed who, and one's a forensic one's a psychologist, psychologist trying to figure out how to smoke. What do they do for this? What do they do for the story? What do they do in the end? What What is uh, their arc? What do they help with? See, what happened is that the writers saw Pulp Fiction uh, a few <laughs> years ago and realized that nonlinear storytelling was kind of badass, so mm. they need to start in media's res. Mm. No, uh, did they don't need to? Be I was going to say, when did True Detective come out? 
They don't need to be there at all. No. There's no reason for this to be like a backstory. I don't know when True Detective came out, but when did this come out? 2013, I think. It's about right. Uh, 2014. 2014. I don't know why time starts going backwards here either. Yeah, this movie probably would have actually benefited a lot from being told linearly. Oh, we're not even finished with the movie, though. Uh, we yeah. could probably finish it because I feel like I just want to be done. Homeboy fixes the machine. And then she... Because he's good at 90s VHS yeah. electronics. Okay. Oh now we're caught up to when the detectives are interviewing her. Yeah. After uh, the pusher is dead, everyone in the apartment complex is dead. The doctor has a concussion. Um, and so they go out and they talk to the boyfriend and he has the looking for this and manages to fix it. And he, uh, ascends. I'm just, I'm like just a speed round trying to get through this fucking thing. Yeah. We're almost there. We're almost oh. there guys. Um, wait, he took it just now. Did she ever take it again or no? I think she, she, she just, she doesn't need it because there were two left and now they're working together. Yeah. Now, now they, now, now they commingle. Yeah. They're, they're symbiotic. They're cohabitating. <laughs> yeah. um, they were roommates. They were roommates. <laughs> they were roommates. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they go back to the unlocked room that she was in and is confused why she walked away. But she's actually sitting on the wall outside the building. Yeah. And she has the dumbest monologue about like normal, crazy, two sides of the same coin. Yeah. You can flip it, but it doesn't matter. You always need the other side. And I think at that point I was like, Ready to just, just roll, yeah, literally roll credits. Roll credits. Literally, please. the end of this movie is maybe the sane people are the ones that are crazy. Yeah. And it's like, no, you're fucking nuts. You're maybe, wackadoo. Maybe the people that shop at Hot Topic are really enlightened compared to you normal people. And they have 163 IQs. 163 IQ, and they're smarter and better. They're just a little quirky and weird. Oh, my Damn God. Normies. That. Yeah, damn normie. This is damn, damn normies. The movie. Damn normies. Yeah. All right, movie ends um, with her running full force down a building. Down a building towards the camera. And but, but just remind, this is how she runs. She runs real awkward. I'm not yeah. a great runner either, you know. But like, damn. Uh, yeah, but I feel damn. like you could be an actor and act like you know how to run. I, I could fake it. <laughs> Very dangerous over short distances. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's oh, the end of the movie it just runs you. with the camera roll credits so there's no plot there is no plot there's yeah, so the, much plot we're drowning in plot oh, I mean that was a laborious way to I mean yeah you can sum up the plot in like one minute like, yeah easily there's a character arc and it's basically um, a psycho woman starts off as a psycho woman um, goes through a little bit of hardship uh, and then gains psycho superpowers but hasn't really changed in any meaningful way did she change at all i thought no, the whole point so. of the movie no, was she that she was good the way she was yeah she's she's okay she's comfortable with being herself now yeah but i don't know if she's gonna like fight crime in that fucking skeleton costume or like i don't, know. I don't even think she accepts herself like she just uh, is able to exist with another personality that inside of her yeah but she just got a roommate. That was it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, she just got a roommate that she likes yeah. and got rid of all the other ones. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. it's it's not she wasn't perfect the way she was because she kept hearing voices telling her to fuck her doctor or hit him with a frying pan. And she didn't like that too much. Yeah, they don't really explain or justify that in any meaningful way. OK. Oh, uh, God. So. I'm so glad we're done. <laughs> Aaron. Yeah. Did you like this movie? I actually did kind of like this you movie. You are such a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> you're, so, you're the most emo of all of us. I know. That's why. Just look at that shop at Hot Topic. <laughs> like, um, I thought, I don't know. It's, it's a bad movie. It is a really bad movie. But I kind of enjoy bad movies. Okay. They're fun to rip apart. They're fun to, I mean, I think honestly I might have been spinning something this is like a blank canvas to me <laughs> where i can like sort of Just imagine pure, or kind of create your angst sure my way around these holes in the plot and stuff right which is which is fun and engaging for me on a level that like you know a good movie might not be okay so i, I did like it i i don't know if i'd recommend it unless you're into that shit would, <laughs> like, would you would you watch it again i might 
I might. Would you really? really? I think there might be something we missed. There's got to be. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, that's there's like a minefield. We just watched it again. I know, but we were we were talking the first time, and then we were talking the second time. Um, I might. It's going to be a while. Though, so you think there's something deeper? I, into. I don't. I don't know if there is, but it, there's a question there, right? Okay. Like, Gareth. I think that I think the movie manipulated you, man. Like, there's you nothing right. deeper in this movie. This you movie is right. like is like shallow as it comes. This is. 14 year old teen angst like distilled down into 90 minutes. I'd also be really curious to check out the graphic novel and more see if it's in the graphic novel. If it I, sucks or if it maybe check out the graph. It can't, it can't be a whole lot worse. Maybe it's written by a 14 year old. I don't know. I feel so bad about alien Raiders. Like having watched this <laughs> now. I, I'm sorry. I, I my school. I don't know what I rated it, but uh, d- double it, I guess. I don't know. Double it. Give it to the next person. Double it and give it to the next movie. <laughs> uh, I hated this. This, uh, that's, I think, yeah, that's it. The movie talks down to you unless, unless you relate to this movie on like a very personal level, this movie's talking down to you. Um, and everyone is horribly unlikable. There's not a single likable character in this. Right. The dog, when he speaks is a piece of shit. Yeah. The, yeah. the dog's and just starts acting like a dog. It's, he's, it's a dog. It's they didn't dog have to great. go with the British accent. The that. yeah, um, the elevator is kind of an asshole. It sucks. I wouldn't ride that elevator either. The doctor sucks for electrocuting the shit out of his patient for however many years. Yeah. Um, the boyfriend sucks because he's a horny sex pervert. Fucking everyone, and then like peer he's pressuring, taking advantage of like he doesn't even die. He's taking advantage of like mentally unwell women. Yeah, just to fuck them, just to yeah. have sex with them. Like yeah. he even admits that he's faking. Like he cut across his wrist so that they would think he was suicidal so he could stay at the asylum and fuck more women. Yeah. Like in the movie uh, he's kind of positioned as a good guy. Uh, it feels that way. He he doesn't ever get any recompense for his actions or anything he like that. He doesn't really help either. No, he no. he is the one who makes the antagonist of the movie, the antagonist of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's Damn. true. That's a good point. Like cuz without push- him there's no pusher. Well, the pusher would still be pushing, but she would be pushing like a normal person. She gets super pushing powers. Oh, yeah. That's true. And our hero doesn't really save the day. Everyone's dead at this point. Yeah. The pusher really kills herself. The pusher kills herself. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. After the hero saves her. All she does is monologue. Yeah. Yeah. And fight badly. I mean, like, even that one point during the last fight scene, the pusher says, like, why don't you fight back or something? And it's like, yeah, please. Like, just something interesting happen. Something. Uh, Would you recommend this movie, Gareth? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel so guilty about my previous verdict on Alien Raiders. I, I would recommend Alien Raiders. I'd watch that three more times before I ever wanted to consider watching this movie again. I would absolutely watch Alien Raiders again. I would not. Compared would, to this. I would watch this ten times before I watched <laughs> Alien Raiders. Jesus Christ. You're, you're just, I guess you're more angsty than us, man. I'm so angsty right now. It, it wasn't a phase for him. I smoke was, a cigarette so hard. I guess what we're learning from <laughs> this is that it... <laughs> like, <laughs> It wasn't a phase for Aaron. It was a phase for Rob and I, but yep. not for Aaron. Uh, Aaron, what do you rate this? I'm going to rate this. Oh, man, it's always hard to figure out out of what. <laughs> like, Whatever you want. Oh, I know. I'm going to give it three. Three. Three John C. Riley's is my fault. This is my fault. Out of ten, <laughs> give me a three out of ten. Three you out would, of ten. You would watch it again. You love this movie. I didn't love it, but it, I thought it was kind it's of his, a three out of. You would watch a movie three out of ever. ten again. I would watch a three out of ten again one more time. Maybe not after that. One more time, Gareth. I will give this movie three bad wigs out of two bad piercings. Hey, that's a really high score. Yeah, that's I don't huge. Care. <laughs> I, I, maybe, Three out of two? That's 150%. A, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't Damn. know. Negative three bad wigs out of... I don't I don't know. This movie broke my brain. I, I don't care what... Unrated. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, is there any redeeming quality? Uh, Some of the shots were cool. Is there any... Uh, before I give my verdict... 
Is there anything um, that the movie did well? I like some of those motion shots in the beginning. Yeah, there's some cool, like, weird in camera. They're, I mean, they, they're really cheap looking, but they're, like, at least something. Other than this, like, blue-gray, green ma- Matrix movie. There's some good, like, uh, perspective shit that they try to do that almost looks like, you know, like, shifting perspective or, like, force perspective type stuff that they do really well. There's, like, a scene early on that happens with, like, some stairs. That works really well for oh, me. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then they abandon it immediately because they forgot to make something interesting. Because it was expensive. Yeah, because it was hard and everyone was creatively bankrupt I by like, the time they made this movie. I like the one in-camera effect where they just spin the camera around. While, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. On uh, Eliza Dushku or something. Yeah, Eliza Dushku. Uh, but like, I don't think they had like a, a rig to do that. It, so yeah. it's just kind of like a little jerky while like the cameraman slowly spins the camera and tries to keep it on her. Yeah. It, it had some stylized like comic book stuff, which I liked. Right. It uh it had scenes like almost chapters. It would label things, mm-hmm. uh, you know, backwards. Oh, yeah, that's right. There that's kind of cool. Sometimes the writing on the wall was. Well, it wasn't writing on the wall, but there was literally writing on the wall, like the chapter that was happening. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's that's cool, I guess. Um, What do you think it got rated as? I looked it up. Oh, you did? Yep. Um, we'll go Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes? That seems pretty consistent for us. I'm going to say it got a... Now, you see, Alien Raiders, I thought it had like a 60, and I thought I was being generous, and it had 100. It's only six reviews. I was blown away by that. <laughs> <laughs> it still blows my mind. Um, I, I think... I think Rotten Tomatoes looked at this favorably. I'm going to go like 68%. I'm going to say like 30, 35%. Got 46. 46? Split the difference. Yep. Yeah, no shit. About half. About half the people. Okay. Well, what were some of the people, what is some of those people like about it? Uh, yeah, what do we see. got for reviews? Let's, Let's do a review section. Uh, So the, the bad one is, uh, this comment is, a degrade extravaganza of unpleasantness. <laughs> Concise. Yeah. <laughs> the good. the good one is uh, the scribbler doesn't live up to its premise, but it still has some good scenes and provides food for thought. No, it doesn't. Gave a B minus. <laughs> like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Food for thought. I Very was just groaning at some of the polarizing to... film. I guess good art divides the audience, right? Yeah. All right. I give this uh, three. Uh, Neo Noir Eliza Dushku's yes. out of 10 Soprano Mans. <laughs> you give the same rating? Yeah. Wait, like I kind of liked it, but you fucking hated it and we gave it the same rating. You kind of <laughs> liked it and gave it a three. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. I hated it. I was going to say, like, if you kind of like it, you would give it like a five out of ten or something. Yeah, five or a six or something. It deserves I'm only giving it three because uh, Eliza Dushku is hot and she's neo-noir in this. doesn't know how to smoke. And I think that's adorable. It's not. Fuck this movie. Yeah, this movie sucks. (laughs) It deserves a three. I think this movie deserves a three. I don't know what I rated it, but I think it deserved less less <laughs> yeah. or worse like, i don't know <laughs> i don't know what okay B- we didn't like it no we are not um we, 14 we, no but also like we don't write movies we haven't made anything well I've, I've made a couple of short films they suck but i've made short films what could they have done in your opinions to have made this a better movie i mean it's well, first of all, change the title. The Scribbler is kind of lame. Maybe the worst superhero maybe ever. Mm-hmm. Kind of lame. Um, And I think, I mean, like it was right there. We were making the movie better as we were watching it, which was like embrace the metaphor of it. Right. Uh, have however many personalities inside her and each of them represented by someone else in the building. And that would have made this so much more compelling. You just embrace this more ethereal side of it i'm actually um, but gonna it's check. so concrete and so played so straight and i know that like the director right now and the writer is like screaming at me that it's like no it actually is that deep but it's it's just not i'm trying to look up this movie to see if maybe we are actually correct oh yeah about the personalities about the personalities. it seems like it's so softballed in there like that like it's 
What does the never nude personality represent? The never not nude personality represent? Her sexuality. Because she has sex with him before she dies. And then she's wearing clothes after she's feeling exposed. So she kills her sexuality? Or her promiscuality. <laughs> like, which is not a bad thing. Okay. And the liberal arts teacher represents her love of snakes? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Nope. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's face value. It's face value. Yeah, according at least to Wikipedia, we were smarter than the movie. Yeah. So again, like, I mean, I think that's the whole point of this show is to be smarter than the movie. But yeah, there's just no. It's played so straight, and there's no wink to camera. It no. just thinks it's so clever and so cool, and so profound. Yeah, you can make her edgy, and that's fine. What, sure. but but what you want to do edgy. is like he was saying <laughs> is is <laughs> embrace her personalities and in those flashbacks where she's getting electrocuted to shit um uh they're supposed to be removing the personalities right but show the ones that are going to be in the hotel that she's going to remove later like show them in those flashbacks like so show the overly sexualized girl um who is the one in her head telling her to fuck the doctor um, show the, uh, violent Alice, the, uh, the one that like she uses more or less as like, um, an enforcer or escapism, like whenever she has to do like a bad thing to protect herself, um, show the weirdo, um, extravagant, um, fucking boa snake lady. I don't know what exactly that would be. Maybe that's her like flamboyant like her creativity or her something. Creativ- sure. Her creativity. And then the uh, stoner, burnout, disconnected um, Sasha Gray character, like that's the one she uses to completely dissociate and just like uh, uh, just. You, or maybe you know. that's like her child. I mean, maybe you shouldn't cast a, a porn star, but that could be like her childhood innocence because like the bunny ears or something. Right. But she's like completely dissociated. So like her childhood innocence is like even dissociated from from that. And so over the course of the movie, like we show those in the in the um, in the flashbacks and then. Every time she hits the the fucking wall mounted vape, um, and one of those characters dies, then we one one we lose that voice in her head. Um, yeah, give the voices in her head its distinct character as well, and not just like them talking over each other constantly. Yeah, not fuck them or kill them. Like make it more, you know, make it something, anything. And all the and, voices in her head were her own voice. Right. Like, different, yeah. Like different voice. Yeah. yeah. Give them different voices. Yeah. That'd have been so. And, and so give then them as personality, those, give them character. Yeah. And, and, and as those characters die off, you start to like, she starts to wonder more and more like, am I losing myself? Cause she even says that, like, am I losing my soul or whatever? Yeah. Every time she electrocutes herself. Yeah. Like is the scribble. Am I? Yeah. I think you said that earlier. Like, am I the scribble or is like the scribbler, the real me or am I the real me? Yeah. Which, but the Which scribbler says that, almost cool. That's almost profound, but it almost, then, it, shits the bed immediately afterwards yeah but as she kills off those parts of herself maybe we say maybe we try and make it that you know they're dying but like she's coming she's 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 killing that part of i don't know because that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense well because yeah then you wouldn't want to kill off your person you want to embrace those elements of yourself right right yeah unless they were viewed as negative but well, unless she, re- unless she, oh, yeah, I guess you, well, I guess you could rewrite the movie then. So instead of having them be positive elements of her, they could be negative elements of her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Make them all very negative characters. Yeah. Maybe make bunny ears like her, like trauma. Maybe she experienced like, yeah, something as a child or something. Um, have, um, maybe like the boa constrictor lady can be like disorganization or something. Yeah. Something. Or maybe they have them be like a corrupted element of some part of her personality that's better. And then right. she kills them and then they can come back as the positive version of her. Yeah, because even like the first time she fucks, like she's not fucking boyfriend as herself. Like, yeah, she even says that. Yeah, she goes and takes a 25 minute piss and then comes back a different person. Yeah. And so like you could you could uh, when when she goes through that trauma of the electrocution, we could be either killing her like overt sexuality or like the fact that she like uses sex as like a coping mechanism because that's what she's had to do in the past or something like that. We could use that metaphor of like, you know, uh, uh, overcoming that 
more uh, less than like killing it off right and then at the end maybe all of those forces come back together as she's learned to accept herself and oh yeah maybe that's how she defeats the pusher instead of the pusher committing suicide and like she overcomes by embracing herself and her personalities yeah it would it would it would make more sense for that to happen like um Actually, what would be cool is if she accepts all of her personalities back into herself. And you know how we saw that countdown timer or that countdown thing every time she electrocuted herself was kept going down. Mm -hmm. If it like spun up, like just kept spinning up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And then like the glass cracks on it or something. But then it stops back at one. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, because now she's one whole thing. Like all yeah. of these emotions, all of these personalities inside of her have coalesced into one complete person. One complete scribbler. One complete scribbler. scribbler. Um you could you would you want to just kind of lean into it more as a metaphor and less as a literal interpretation of a bunch of women dying in an insane asylum and her trying to crack a murder case. Like it just doesn't work. No. Yeah, I'd agree. Maybe that's in the comic. Maybe we just all maybe I'm going to tune in the comic. Tune in next week for the next partial recall where we read a comic book together. <laughs> I'm going to color and I'm bringing chocolate milk. I will. I'm in. Wait a minute. <laughs> you two can sit crisscross applesauce and I'll like read a panel and then I'll like show. Yeah. Tune in next Deal. week where I drink a gallon of chocolate milk and I'll run. throw up on a comic. <laughs> you drink a gallon of chocolate milk and run. <laughs> yeah. Just cut to next week and we're all just like. Holding our stomachs like on the floor, like and puke and shit. Just farting like an alien raider. <laughs> <laughs> Ripping it. Oh God! Figure All out right. which one of us is the scribbler by drinking milk <laughs> and seeing who writes backwards the best. <laughs> who yeah. writes back- it's not me. I fucked it up. <laughs> like, I don't know. That was did, pretty good. Did you write killer slut on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you, wrote, you wrote die yeah. killer slut. <laughs> die, die killer, killer slut. slut. But you misspelled killer. And then I put elevator forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I fucked the V up. I'm realizing it's it's uh, right side up and correct. All right. Anyway, is there anything else we want to say about the scribbler? I really hope the comic is better. Like the it's comic got to be. It was good enough to be made into this. It's good enough to be made into this low budget piece of crap direct to video DVD. <laughs> Paid seventy five cents for this. That's too much. Uh, you should get your money back. Right on the money. Ah oh, man, yeah. I hope that the, the comic is just like maybe a underrated hidden gem that got buried. Don't don't watch this. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did we recommend it to people already? Uh, I don't. Already did. Okay. I said, if you're into that, like, would blank, you recommend blank this, Gary? Uh, no. Okay. If you're, if you are currently 14 and going through your goth phase, uh, maybe you just want a bunch of validation. Yeah. That's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> God damn it. I'm in. Play it again. And you want to see three boobies? Oh yeah. There you go. All right. We watched a movie. Partially. <laughs>